Hello, I'm Julie from Naked Dragon and I'm here this evening with Sandy Newbigging. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome you back to Naked Dragon, Sandy. I Thank know you. we've done a little bit of work together um, over the last few months, which has been really exciting. And uh, this evening it's even more exciting because Sandy's introducing something brand new to us and to tonight's audience, um, which you've called CALM. Yes. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about what CALM is and what it stands for? Well, I am very much into meditation. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, I was very stressed. I was very unhappy, despite having lots of really amazing things happening in my life. You know, I was uh, on the TV. I had really good courses. I was with the girl in my dreams and the house in my dreams, driving a car in my dreams. And everything was going great, but I woke up one day and realized I wasn't happy yet. And it was really concerning because, well, I had everything that I thought would make me happy. And it was around about then that I realized that my relationship with life, my relationship with my mind, my relationship with my emotions had to had to evolve somewhat, and that was when I um, got into meditation. Mm -hmm. And whereas, whereas previously I was really focused on changing the mind with different forms of therapy, that was when my life uh, took on a different uh, perspective, and I started to also play with changing my relationship with my mind. Mm -hmm. And what I've discovered over the last few years is that when you start to change relationship with your mind, you can't help but experience much more peace, much more joy, much more contentment, and uh, end up being much more present, which is kind of the holy grail in self-help person development really, isn't it? You know, Absolutely. how to be present. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the way that you described that then, it was almost as if initially it was surface stuff, like the house, the car, the dream girlfriend. It was all external. So you move from the external to the internal. I find it, it appears, what I can tell from working with people from all around the world, of all different socioeconomic backgrounds and ages and stuff, yeah is that there seems to be a journey where uh, people have to tend to go through searching for what they want on the outside yes. until the, if, they, if they're lucky enough get it to then realize actually what I'm really looking for is an internal experience. Mm -hmm. Actually, I want happiness, I want peace, I want joy, I want contentment, I want love and I can't find it outside myself and it mm -hmm. has to, there's a point where the journey turns inward to, to, to go find it within. Mm -hmm. Do you think that people are coming to that stage at a younger and younger age now? <laughs> because you're, you're obviously uh, very young, Sandy, and um, I'm noticing that we're having younger and younger people now coming to the events, whereas a few years ago it would tend to be sort of from middle-aged onwards, where people would, would be at this stage where they're searching, searching for, for greater meaning in life. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing lots, lots more people now in their sort of, even late teens in some respects, yeah. and 20s coming to these events, which is, is lovely. And are you finding that it's moving that way too? I just ran a retreat in uh, Turkey for seven days, and I'd say 50% of them were under 30. That's interesting. Um, because yeah. it appears to be that consciousness is ramping up. Yeah. It is becoming increasingly uncomfortable to sit on, to sit on the fence mm -hmm. and dabble in both worlds. It's like you have to make a choice at some point. Yes. Am I going to go the materialistic view? Um, am I going to go via the head? Or am I going to go more spiritual and into the heart? Now the good news is that as you start to explore the spirit, as you start to explore the present moment in peace, you recognise it's actually not an either or, but a both. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. But again, you know, if you're looking to find everything just from one version of reality or, or one realm, mm -hmm. then you're bound to find that something's missing. Yeah, it doesn't really work. It's the polarity that's going on, isn't it? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You know, for me, I always felt like something was missing in my life. It didn't matter how much I accumulated, you know, I was very fortunate, I ended up with more money than I could possibly need, but at the same time, it, it didn't fill the, the, the sense that something was lacking. Mm -hmm. And what I discovered through meditation is what was lacking was actually me. Mm -hmm. I was <laughs> unaware of my real self, yeah. and externally, um, I was missing the present moment. I was so far in my head, I was thinking about life, but that made me one step removed from life, because the mind can only think and talk about life, but it doesn't directly experience it. You know, you know yes, what I mean? Yeah. And so there's a point where if you really want the fullness that life has to offer, it's really important to become present. And in order to do that, you really have to learn how to heal your relationship with your mind. Mm. So s since you've been doing all this development work, mm. how does your everyday life look now compared to how, how it was? Well, the, the exciting thing is that it looks very similar. But my experience of life is completely different. Okay. Um, so I'm still doing very similar work, and on the outside I, I look similar, um, my relationships are similar, you know, but the, 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 the difference is that through meditation I've discovered more of an inner stillness, an inner silence that I can put my attention on any time I want. And 
because we as human beings feel what we focus on, when I inwardly put my attention on the presence of my own being, the presence of stillness, you experience peace. And that's pretty awesome if you think about it. Yes. So my experience of life has changed because it's more of a, I'm inwardly attentive to peace as I go out throughout my day. And what that's, what's happened is I'm less attached to needing my external life to look any particular way because I'm already fulfilled. Um, there's always more, but I, I, I don't need it to make me happy in, at some point in the future. Yeah. And so for me, my relationship with life is more one of playing, uh, exploring. Um, I take it less seriously than I used to yeah. um, because I don't need it to look a certain way. Because mm. you talk a lot as well about um, attracting what you want. Yeah. And again, do you find since you've been doing all, all this work that you attract things much quicker and in a, in a a lot more real way, perhaps, and so what you do attract has far more meaning for you now than it did before. What I've actually found is that I was always attracting what I wanted, or should I say, I was always attracting what I needed, Okay. but I perceived them as problems. But now as my intent with life is to evolve and expand in consciousness and, and learn how to love my life more unconditionally, anything that used to be a problem is really an opportunity for me to learn how to love more unconditionally. And so again, it's all about my relationship with life. And uh, I, I really see that, you know, every moment there's a miracle being placed right in front of me. I just have to be alert enough to notice it. Yes, because you are a master manifester, aren't you? Uh, it, it seems to be. <laughs> it, seems, <laughs> it feels that way, you know. It, do, it, does, it does feel that way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, but I, I believe everyone is. It's just that they can be missing it if they're in their head uh, thinking and judging and, you know, not, necessarily, not intentionally, but the mind's a bit of a complainer sometimes. And, yeah. you know, I remember getting into a, a brand new car and and having a few moments of joy until I looked down and saw a little scratch. And I still to this day remember my mind going, oh, but I'll happy when I get that fixed, you know. <laughs> so my happiness in the past was very fleeting. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. And delayed by the sound of it. Well, I'll be happy when. Yeah, well, you'd be, I'd be at a party, but I'd be in my head going, am I having fun yet? You know, as opposed <laughs> to just being at the party, and yeah. just dancing or whatever, you know. It's yeah. just, it, it's it really, getting present is, is the doorway to... Uh, the life that we actually are hungry for. The trick is um, we need to know what's preventing us from being present. And that's really uh, a, a gross uh, focus and attention on, on the mind, which d distracts us from that. Yes, yes, which is what being calm is all about. Exactly. Calm is, uh, yeah, we get back to the where we started. <laughs> calm stands for Conscious Awareness Life Meditation. And it's called Conscious Awareness because it's about becoming more consciously aware throughout your day. And the purpose of having life in there is a, a constant reminder that meditation is not something that's meant to be just for a couple times a day for five minutes if you find the time. But actually meditation is a state of being that you can tap into with your eyes open as well. Yes. And conscious awareness of life meditation is able to, you can use it with your eyes open and closed so that your day becomes mm. more conscious and in doing so more peaceful and more free. That sounds wonderful. Well, we're really looking forward to learning a lot more about how that's going to work, Sandy, so that we can all be as lovely and sparkly and as, as manifesting as you. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. We're looking Thank forward you. to this evening. Great to have you back. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you.